Hello. Today we're working on the activity checking for equal values and it's the fifth uh, activity in the variables chapter of Learn to Code 2, checking for equal values. The goal here is to collect as many gems as there are switches. So if we look at this puzzle, I'll run the puzzle one time and you can see in this case if we look at this area down here closest to us every time we run the puzzle we could get some number of switches to pop up uh, somewhere between zero and nine switches so a random number and random locations of switches now the interesting thing is the switches are already toggled on so we don't have to come over here and toggle them on okay now, uh, up on the other side, I'll move ourselves over to this other side here. Up on the other side, if we look at the gems, there's also a random number of gems we need to collect, and they pop up at random locations anywhere over on this side here. But if you notice, there's only four here that pop up, and we have to collect eight in total. So it looks like as we clean up gems on this side of the puzzle, more will appear. Okay, so since we can just stay over on this side of the puzzle, uh, it looks like we can just sort of wander around this square here, collecting gems until we have the number we're supposed to have, and then we should stop. So that maybe uh, suggests we might want to use a while loop that says something like, while some condition is true, keep wandering around this square collecting gems. Okay, And the number of gems we have to collect is however many uh, switches are on this side. So in this case, there are eight switches. So we're going to need to wander around this square right here, collecting gems until we have exactly eight gems, and then we'll be done. All right? Now, the other important thing uh, about this uh, activity is that we're introducing a new idea here in Swift, and this idea is the idea of a constant. Okay, and a constant is exactly like a variable in that it's a container that holds a value. Okay, it's a named container that holds a value, a container, and we give it a name, and, and there could be some value in it like 17, and if we ever want to access that value, we can just use the variable name. Okay, um, but in this case, in a case of a variable, once you declare a variable and you assign it a value, you can any time later in your code give that variable a different value. So if we, uh, we've worked with things like number of gems, and number of gems later on, if we started off at zero, we've changed it to one, and then later we change it to two, and later we change it to 15, and so on. Well, in a constant, it works the same way. It's a container that holds a value, but once you give it a value, that value can never change. It's constant over time, okay? So uh, here's the syntax for doing that in Swift. We use the keyword let, and in this case, the variable name, or the constant name, is number of tries. That's the container that will hold the value, and the value it's gonna hold is three. And we can never change number of tries, will always be three, okay? All right, uh, so in this puzzle, we're given uh, down here at the bottom the keyword let, which says let we're de declaring a constant called switch counter, and switch counter is assigned to the number of switches. And the number of switches, every time we run this code, number of switches has the value in it of the number of switches that are given in the puzzle. So in this case, number of switches will be eight. So this is essentially saying let switch counter, the constant, equal the value 8. If I run it again, it's going to say let switch counter equal the constant 2. Okay? So we can use this value, this constant switch counter, to know when we want to stop wandering around collecting gems on this side. We're going to want to keep wandering around collecting gems as long as our number of gems that we've collected is less than switch counter. In fact, let's go ahead and write that down because that's the main body of our 
of our program here. So uh, we'll say while uh, our number of gems is less than switch counter, switch counter, we want to wander uh, collecting gems. Okay. Now, this is just a vague uh, sort of skeleton of a main program, uh, but it will get us started here. Uh, now, of course, we haven't defined wander around collecting gems, and we also haven't defined our number of gems. So number of gems is not going to be a constant because this is something we're going to want to set to zero because we have no gems, and we're going to want to increment it or bump it up by one every time we collect a gem. So this will be a variable, var number of gems, and we'll assign it or initialize it with the initial value of zero. All right, and now uh, let's go ahead and make a function, uh, and we may change this, but wander collecting gems. It would be great if we could write a function here that just um, you know, sort of encapsulated the idea of wandering around collecting gems. And uh, if we look at this puzzle, that may not be that difficult, really, uh, because wandering around collecting gems, we're going to keep doing this all the time. And really, that could just be a, you know, move forward and collect a gem, essentially. Uh, but we're going to have to worry about when we should turn and when we're blocked. Uh, but anyway, let's let's get this started here and do something like check if we're on a gem first. First, if we're on a gem, then let's collect that gem. Now, what else should we do right after we collect that gem? That's right. We need to update our number of gems because we just collected a gems. So the right place to do this is to say number of gems is going to be equal to whatever number of gems value was before plus one more. Okay, remember we evaluate the right hand side here which says take the value in number of gems which at the start is zero. We're going to add one to it and we'll reassign that value zero plus one or one back into the variable number of gems. Okay, so that takes care of the collecting gems part. Now uh, after that, we just want to move forward so that we're ready to uh, deal with the next tile. But we don't always want to move forward, do we? Is there going to be a case when we're blocked up here? Uh, when we're blocked. In fact, let's just run this here and we'll watch and see what happens uh, when we're blocked. So the gems show up in random locations. He collects a gem, moves forward, collects a gem, moves forward no gem to collect, tries to move forward, and uh, notices there's a cliff in front of him, so he can't go on any further. So uh, at this point, we need to um, take care of turning when it's the appropriate time to turn. And if we look at the puzzle, uh, we know that he's going to need to turn. Uh, he just can't move forward without doing something first, right? So the first thing we should do is check here. And we know that we want to uh, check if we're blocked first before we keep moving forward. So we can say if we're blocked, if is blocked is true, then we want to, in this case, turn right. And in fact, in every case in this puzzle, when we're blocked, we want to turn right because we're going to keep going around in this square. So if you notice, after we turn right and we head down this back row here, as soon as we're blocked, we want to turn right again. And then as we head down this row coming towards us, as soon as we're blocked, we're going to want to turn right again. And then as we head uh, to the left across the row right in front of us, when we're blocked, we're going to turn right again and so on. So this should work for this puzzle the one we need to go around in a square, any time we're blocked, we'll turn right. Now, um, I'll run this, and we'll see uh, that this will probably work just fine. But let's keep in mind that we want to make uh, functions, if we can, make them very generalizable, meaning that they should work on another puzzle, maybe a puzzle that's not the shape of a square, but the shape of some path where we might have different options, whether we want to turn right or turn left. So um, let's just run this, and we'll see uh, that it should work fine. But if it doesn't, uh, we're going to, um, well, even if it does, we're going to fix this to make it more generalizable. 
Okay, notice that two gems showed up, but we need to collect a total of nine. So others will keep appearing at times, even behind the character here. So we have two gems, and he's blocked, and he collects the gem and turns right. Keeps going, moving forward till he's blocked. Collects this gem and turns to the right because he's blocked. So this is all working out just fine. Gems keep popping up. We need to keep going until we have the same number of gems as there are toggled switches. And since there are nine toggled switches in the back there, we need to collect nine gems. And we're on our eighth gem right there. He's blocked. He turns to the right, moves forward, moves forward, collects a gem, but he's blocked. So he turns to the right. And now when he checks and says, is my number of gems less than switch counter? It's not. So he's done. Okay, uh, that's a good job. Um, and again, this is a nice function, wander collecting gems, but it could be better. So let's go ahead and fix this up, and not because it doesn't work again, but because we want to make something that not only works for this puzzle, but would work for lots of different puzzles. And in this case, a puzzle where the path might go, and every time we're blocked, we'll have a choice on whether we want to turn right or left. So, um, here, uh, when we're blocked, we don't want to just automatically turn to the right. We want to make sure we can turn to the right. Okay? And one way to do that is to check if we're blocked and we're not blocked to the right. Not is blocked to the right is true. Then we can turn right. Okay? If we were blocked to the right, then we couldn't turn right. So this is not only more generalizable, it's safer. Right? We can't just say, uh, or we shouldn't really just say every time we're blocked we want to turn to the right. We want to check if we're blocked and we're not blocked to the right, then it's safe to turn to the right. Okay. Now, if that's the case, uh, we can also say else if, what is the condition to check if we want to turn to the left? Well, again, we'll check if we're blocked, then we need to turn. And if we can turn to the left, which means we're not is blocked to the left, then we know we can turn to the left and there'll be an opening there to move. Okay? So uh, this is a, a lot more generalizable. It'll work on a, a much more complicated puzzle where we have options to turn right or left. Anytime we're blocked, we know we want to turn. First, we need to say if we're not blocked to the right, then it's okay to turn to the right. We have an opening that way. Otherwise, if we're blocked, we know we need to turn. Uh, and if we're not blocked to the left, and we can turn to the left, then maybe we should turn to the left. Okay. Now, what if we were blocked both to the right and left? Well, maybe in that case, it might, it might make sense to turn totally around, because we know we can come back from the way, uh, the way we came from, probably. So, uh, But we'll save that for another time. Okay. All right, uh, let's just run this one more time, make sure it works with this. Uh, we haven't messed anything up when we made these edits. And uh, great, so we're going to need to collect nine gems again because there are nine toggled switches. He already has two of them. Here's the third one. So he turned right safely there, and he's blocked, and he's, n and he's not blocked to the right, so he'll turn right. Okay and he's uh, collecting his sixth gem. Here comes his seventh gem. Not blocked to the right, turn to the right. Eighth gem, and not blocked to the front, but not blocked to the right, so he turns right. Collects his ninth gem, moves forward, and then he'll check and see, is his number of gems still less than switch counter? And it's not, it's equal to switch counter. So he'll stop there. Okay, uh, great, uh, that's, that's nice. We made a, a nice simple main program that just checks as long as our number of gems we have collected is not equal to or less than the switch counter. We just wanna keep wandering around our puzzle collecting gems until we get enough. And the wander collecting gems was pretty simple too. It just says if we're on a gem, then we collect the gem and we increment our number of gems and any time we're blocked, we first check and see if there's an opening to the right, then we turn right. 
If there's not an opening to the right, we come down and we're blocked and we check is there an opening to the left. If there is, we turn left. We do that before we move forward, okay? All right, and one other thing to review here really quickly. Remember, we learned about this idea of constants and we declared a constant up here called switch counter, which is just equal to the number of switches. Now, I just wanna show you really quickly what's gonna happen if you try to somewhere later in your code say switch counter equals 17 or something like that. If you try to say switch counter equals 17, well, that's gonna give you an error because remember switch counter was defined as a constant and you can never try to assign a new value to switch counter somewhere else in your code. Okay, that's gonna give you an error and the error here will say down here, error assigned to value switch counter is a let constant. And it gives you two choices to fix it. Uh, one is, of course, we can delete this line, which is what we want to do here. But the other is we could always, if we really did decide that we want to make this constant be a variable, we can always change the let up here to a var and allow that type of uh, modification later in our program. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, just as you can't assign this a new value, we could also not assign this to be number of gems, right? You cannot do that because that's also trying to assign a constant some new value, whatever number of gems is, and we'd get the same error here. Can't assign uh, a value to a let constant. All right, uh, we don't want that though, so let's just get rid of this line. Now, uh, one really quick um, point about when you're writing code and when should you use constants and when should you use variables. Well, the rule of thumb here when you're programming is try to use constants whenever possible and only use a variable when you're certain that you're going to need to change that uh, value sometime in the future. So if you're ever in doubt, always uh, make everything be a constant. Uh, later on, it's really simple to go back and change it to a var if you decide, oh yeah, I am gonna need to change this value at some point. It creates much safer code. You saw there that um, it protects you from you know, accidentally uh, changing a value sometime when you didn't wanna change a value uh, as a constant. So uh, let, the, uh, let the playground help you out uh, and uh, you help it out by telling it these things are constants and these things are variables. And I always know that um, I wanna make a thing a constant first and only when I know that I want to change the value should I, I make that a variable, okay? All right, good job, everybody. Uh, keep working on things like you're working on them. This is going great. Your, your code is getting better each time. Brain is growing, all that good stuff. So keep it up, and we'll see you next time.